Hey everybody, it's the Waggish American here, and it is the end of 2018. 2018 is dead and gone. Anyway, this is going to be my year in review, so let's toss out 2018 and get ready for the next year. First things first, my 172nd scale Hasegawa A6M2. I think this is one of my best kits from this year, in any scale. I don't know how I did it, but the gun stains are just exactly what I was looking for. Um, it really, it's a standout so far in my Zero and Every Scale project. Next up was my Trumpeter 1144 scale uh, YF23. This was pretty fun. I'd never done a 44 scale thing b before. Uh, the base was really quick and fun to knock out. The only complaint I had with this kit was the, um, how I painted it. When I did my clear coat, I had, I think, some silver particles still in the airbrush from painting the exhaust areas and I don't know if it's coming up in the video but it, it's got a weird metallic reflectiveness that it shouldn't have but other than that it looks pretty neat on my shelf. Next I built the physically largest model of this year the Revel 172nd scale Arado AR555E. I love this kit it was a lot of fun. Uh, Revel of Germany makes excellent stuff and I'm a huge Luft 46 fan so this was a great quick project that was basically a massive canvas for me to practice my paint spray stuff. After the Arado came the uh, Tamiya's 72nd scale really old A6M2. Um, this was a pretty taxing build. I got pretty sick of it along the way. This is the first kit I've ever had the black base pre-shading with the, the marbling actually work out. This is honestly probably my favorite paint job that I did this year. Uh, the one really big point of annoyance, I don't know what I did differently between this cowl and this cowl that made it different shades, but it's infuriating to me that it is that way, and I cannot figure out why. So most of the time when I display it, I leave it like this, because it's a bit easier to overlook that error. Uh, but this is a really fun kit. It's the first one I've had really good results on a, on a green with pre-shading and stuff. The, little, the splinter camo came out pretty much as well as I could have hoped, and this... Um, the group build this was a part of was really fun. It was my first experience running one on the fine scale modeler forums, and I had a blast. Following up right after the BF109 was this Tamiya 148 scale Feisler FI103. This is a really fun kit. I'm actually looking to get another one. I, get, I saw an advertisement in a modeling magazine for a set of decals that lets you build the uh, American reverse engineered V1s that they were testing with right at the end of the war and af after the war. So I'm going to be building another one of these soon, I hope. This year I built not one, but two 1144 one, one scale aircraft. The second one being this H6K by Trumpeter. This was an interesting build. I kind of couldn't stand assembly. There was so much putty needed and just terrible fits all around. But painting was a blast. Again, I messed around with pre-shading. On this one, I think I went a little bit too light on the upper surfaces of places like the wings. I also did some did some uh, practice with exhaust staining with pastels, which I think worked excellent. Next up, I built what I think uh, is a close contender for best build of this year for me, the Tamiya 172nd scale F51D. Um, I really like the way this kit came out. I I think it's a little bit overweathered, just a, just a little bit compared to the to the A6M2. But I love the way the silver came out. I do like my underwing rocket staining, where the smoke's kind of hidden by the rockets. I think it had the best cockpit and wheel well I've done in any kit to date, including the 48 scale stuff. It's got just it's got the most interesting of that and it presents very distinctly on my table. Unfortunately, with the, after the F-51, we leave the kits I liked this year and enter what I call the completed disappointments. Um, this FW-190, it actually looks all right on camera. It's good in some regards. I do like the way the paint came out, but I quickly learned the limitations of sponge chipping at 48 scale. It looks completely ridiculous. Uh, if I knew how to do, how to do Hairbrush chip, uh, hairspray chipping. It would have looked correct, but I just kind of ruined it with the that method. All right, this one is probably my biggest. Well, not probably. It is my biggest disappointment that I completed this year because it's just such a miser. 
it's a disappointment. Again, it looks all right through the camera, but up close, there's so much wrong with this thing. Uh, I don't. Something went wrong with my clear coat, and I got this disgusting dusting everywhere. I was using Tamiya clears on top of Tamiya paint, and for whatever reason, there's a ton of these little splotches here where paint just went funny and went off color. It's just, it was a massive time sink. It was not worth the time I spent on it. I did one other scale model this year that is not plastic, but it is something I'm extremely proud of and I think came out about as well as I had hoped. It is a solid wood carved um, Type 7C U-boat. This was done as an art project Sorry, for this. Sorry about that. This was done as an art project earlier this year, actually about a month maybe ago. Um, it started out as a block about that square of balsa wood, and the whole body is one piece. The conning tower is a separate one, and the dive planes and stuff are scrap pieces of scrap pieces of sixteenth uh, inch balsa. It was all done with uh, hand things. It was sandpaper, little uh, leather working tools that I repurposed to carve wood with, X-Acto blades. I used the Dremel a little bit right at the end to get some of this tight stuff here. I uh, hit it with a... S I designed and built this part of the wooden base myself the part that actually holds the boat up. This is one of those oval bases I have a bunch of and I've just been using for various things. Then you got antenna and a periscope out of brass wire. This was a really fun project. It took a really long time, but it looks very elegant on my shelf. I want to show you my works in progress that I will be carrying from 2018 into 2019. Most notably, the new way I'm trying to do some pre-shading. So let me just talk about how the painting on this is going to go. This is going to be the next video you see most likely because this is a school, a project for a class that I hope to have done by the 7th or at least close to being done by the 7th. So on the bottom, where which you don't see a whole lot of and is one color and it's not exposed to the upper conditions, I pre-shaded normally. I just did along the panel lines which I know a lot of people take umbrage with, but apparently I missed a couple I'll have to hit. So that'll get painted just the normal color. Uh, I think it's XF81. It's the British light gray. Up on top, I did a black coat of the whole thing. Then I marbled it with white, very thin white. I learned that some of the things I'd been doing wrong with marbling earlier and painting in general is running way too thick of paint. So this is like six to four, seven to three thinner to paint, and that sprayed beautifully. So this whole thing will get the medium, or the gray, the medium or dark gray. Then I will marble, then I will mask off and then marble again over that gray and then really lightly spray on the green. That should work. Uh, then gloss coat, decals, gloss coat, wash, flat coat. I'm gonna try an oil filter on this. We're gonna see how that goes. Try to blend the decals into the into the paint a little a little bit better. Another flat coat, and this one will be done. By some weird twist of fate, I'm building not one but two Sea Fang or uh, Supermarine products this year. I'm also or right now I'm also building Trumpeter's 148 scale Supermarine Sea Fang. I've got the cockpit all painted, it just needs to be washed and then sealed up. So this one will be getting painted within the next week or two. Next is a little off-camera build that I have not posted any pictures of or uh, won't be doing a build video for. This is Tamiya's classic all my meme material uh, 135th scale Walker Bulldog light tank. I've already built it. I've cleaned seams where I can, primed, mostly appreciated. I want to do a little hit of white on the upper surfaces. Um, this is just a way to honestly just practice with some tank weathering. I have a couple armor projects I'd like to do this year. There's one diorama in specific, in particular, I'd like to do before I before I've got to uh, get out of get out of here and go go off to school next year. Next summer, but and then whatever soon. But it's been pretty interesting. It's I've it's 
nice to have a project to do off camera and that doesn't require a lot of painting you just can sit back and assemble when I'm waiting for things to dry or if I just really really don't want to open up my phone and start recording and set up all my lights and whatever so this is coming well this will probably get painted within the next week the the base coat olive drab next I'm actually bringing an automotive project into 2019 this is I don't actually remember what it is it's a 50s Chevy um, it's it's AMT's coca-cola delivery truck this is a gift for someone I hadn't posted anything about it because I don't know where they follow me on and I didn't want them to stumble upon it but it's getting pretty close to being done it pretty much just needs decals a little bit more red paint um, we got the chassis over here that's ready to go just needs the wheels wheels on and everything else the last project I'm dragging into 2019 with me is uh, a little bit of a kind of a pa not a passion project it's an interest of mine it is Edwards, one of Edwards Weekend Edition 48 scale i16s. I've always liked the i16. I thought they're very funny. It's one of the first models I actually built. I built one. I just take memory of sitting at home a couple years ago. I think I was sick, and so I didn't, I didn't go to school that day. Building one of these on a couch and slathering it with testers and stuff. But the uh, co co cockpit's going pretty good, pretty well. Decent light blue I mixed with some white and Tamiya's light blue. Uh, I tried something new, getting some like dirt field, just generally dirty look with the cockpit with oils and smudging those around, which looks very good. I think it looks very through the canopy area. The other thing I've been messing around a lot with this year is seat belts. I have not been pleased with my seat belt performance in the past. So I've been learning how to do them uh, more correctly, and I've found the method I think I like most. In 48 scale, it's I lay two lines of Tamiya tape on top of each other and cut out the appropriate thickness, then I lay them where I want them to go and I crinkle them up like that, and then I paint over it, seal them in place with a gloss coat, and then you just give them a wash, and it comes out looking like that. It's got good thickness, it's got good bends, and I think it looks very convincing. So it's a technique I, I, I think is something I'll be using quite a bit. All right, now I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I am planning on getting done this next year. Well, jet development is dead. It's a dead project. I don't know why I said I'd do it. Um, I do like early jets. I will build early jets, but thinking I could do it as a series was ridiculous and is not going to happen. It just costs too much for such esoteric kits and in the quantity I need them. Uh, yeah, that's not, that's not that project's dead. Uh, it might come back in future years if I remember about it, it, though. What is not dead is American Cats. And first of all, I reworked the intro and actually added music this time so you can hear what it's supposed to sound like, and I will play that for you right now. All right, now that you finally saw the theme song as it's supposed to be, collected almost all the kits I need to do this project, and I'm gonna show you them right now. Starting off our Grumman lineup is Accurate Miniatures, one for, well, they're all 48, so I'm not gonna say scale, is Accurate Miniatures F3F. This is a very interesting kit. I'm looking forward to actually building this one. They provide you with a uh, kind of generic set of decals and you can build almost any of the 57 airframes that are actually produced from the decal sheet they give you. So I have a lot of research to do to decide which one I'm most interested in. So that represents our F3F, which provides a starting point. Representing the F4F is the excellent Tamiya kit. Not a whole lot to talk about here. It's a Tamiya kit. It looks pretty good. Kind of fearful of that landing gear but we'll figure it out and see how that goes um, for the XF5F I'm running mini crafts kit which is pretty miserable and I don't know what I'm going to do with it I don't know which scheme I'm gonna do I'm not gonna think about this one for a little bit uh, gotta tackle it with with some more focus I'm gonna build it on its own I'm not gonna dual build it Probably the best kit I've got for this project so far is Edward's F6F3 to represent the F6F. 
I'm probably going to just do the paint scheme on the box because I, I really like the, sh the, the angry face and I'm a big fan of the tri-colors. I don't know. We'll see. We've got a while to think about that. This kit was pretty uh, interesting thing to find at a reasonable price and then it's the only thing I've ever really bought aftermarket for. For the F7F Tiger Cat, I'm doing the old AMT kit. I was going to do the, the, I think, Trumpeter makes one, or it might be Italeri, but they actually make a, the recon version, and I don't care about that. Uh, let me crack this open really quick, show you what the aftermarket I got is. I have, uh, I think these are CMK, CMK resin wheels. I read that the rubber wheels are pretty rancid for this kit, so I got some uh, resin wheels. I also got white metal landing gear. I read, I was reading reviews online, and apparently this thing takes so much weight to to stay on its feet that if you don't use metal landing gear, you're probably gonna have broken broken uh, wheel gear. I might still be getting a vacuum form canopy and potentially a resin interior set for this one. I don't know, it's got a, quite a bit of glass, and the cockpit's alright, but if I'm going to go crazy on any of them, it's probably going to be this one. Filling the Bearcats roll is Academy's F8F USS Tarawa Special. Again, I probably will do the one on the box art. If not, I'll probably do this, this one right here. It's got a little fin flash, and it's got the nice big, uh, big numbers. But that's going to be the Bearcat. For the Panther, I've got the Monogram Kit. Um, only thing, no aftermarket on this, might have to get replacement decals, the decals are pretty badly yellowed. For its age, this is not that bad of a kit. It does need to be rescribed though. Now we hit a gap of two kits that I still need to fill. I need to get an F9F Cougar, I'm going to be getting the Kitty Hawk one, but I need to get paid first, so we got that'll be soon ish um, if at some point before the series releases I need to get my hands on the planet models 48 scale XF 10 F that's it's really pretty for me it's a pricey resin kit but to complete the series I gotta get my hands on it at some point for the F 11 F Tiger the last one of the series it's the only real option there is the Lindbergh kit there's a lot of problems with this kit. I can't do any of the schemes in the box because apparently it's based on the prototype. So I gotta find some good pictures of the prototype and that'll be what the the project is. Now there's one additional kit that might make an appearance. Uh, I'm still trying to decide if it's worth it or not. It probably will end up happening. A148 scale Tomcat. Northrop Grumman. So it kind of fits. It, it's the the epitome of the, the research that went on in the XF-10F, but a good 48 scale kit of it is way too expensive. It's even pricier than the Planet Models thing, so we'll see about that. That might have to be a special episode just so I can get the rest of the series out and then do like a special Season 2 release or something of, of that in a while. Anyway, that's American Cats, so that, one, that series is almost ready for me to begin work on. A couple other small projects I hope to have done this year, not nearly as big, these are mostly one-offs. I got an interesting little U-boat that I'm going to be doing a diorama of. ICM's 72nd scale type 27 Seahound midget submarine. I love midget submarines, I'm a big fan of homemade submarines. So when I saw this, it was like five bucks at the model shop, I had to snap it up and I will be building it. Potentially on a display stand, potentially in a mini diorama, just to give it a little bit of context for what it is and why it's there. I've already had um, a plaque made up for it. It's the first professional looking thing I've ever done in modeling, and I think this came out very nice and will look good. To provide, because, alright, so it's, a, it's not that much larger, it's not that much differently sized like a 350 scale or a 700 scale submarine. So to provide the size it actually is, I picked up the Revel of Germany uh, 72nd scale submarine crew. I only need two figures out of here, so I have no idea what I'm going to do with the other 50, 40, 49. 
I'm sure I'll find something. I do want to get one of the big 70 second skill U-boats at some point. It just might be short a deck hand or something. But this is a project that will be coming out this year. Another diorama I'm going to be experimenting with involves the Minicraft 1144 scale Enola Gay. I got some aftermarket for this as well in the form of Bren Gunn's Little Boy Bomb. I'm, I'm still tossing around exactly what I want this project to be in my head, but what I'm most positive, it's going to be a, an air, a flying, a flying stand for the display of the model. The bomb bay doors will be open. It's going to, it's probably going to be dropping little boy out of the doors. Like we'll be capturing the moment the bomb leaves the doors and be hanging from fishing line or a really small uh, piece of clear uh, rod, maybe coming up from the bottom of the base, just suspended right underneath it. And the base will be an aerial picture of Hiroshima, I think. And I don't, I haven't settled on a name for it yet. So maybe something like a warning unheeded or remember Pearl Harbor or something. I'm not really sure about the name, but it's going to get another plaque like that. That's going to be a pretty quick project. It's a very simple kit, but that'll also be a video that comes out this year. So while I won't be showing you any of my stash, there are a couple kits of interest that I think were just a curiosity that may or may not get built this year. This one probably won't be built this year because it needs to be built as a series, I think, and that is this old thing from a small manufacturer named Red Star. Interestingly enough, only it comes with all four of these, and this box actually has an extra one of the lag threes, but without a canopy. So I got to vacuum form a new canopy. Interesting thing, Yak three, Mig three, Lag three. All of these are actually frog kits reboxed. This is the only one that's actually by Red Star. So I, I'm going to be building four frog kits at some point. It's a very interesting. It's a very very unique kit, I think. For a short run kit, it's remarkably clean molds. Um, the only thing, decals are pretty rotted, but it's going to be a unique project. I just don't know when I'm going to have time to do it. All right, so that covers what I've done, what I've gotten, and what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about longer term what I'm going to be doing. Like I keep mentioning, I am in my last year of high school right now. End of this summer, I will be out of here and will not be able to record Probably. I obviously can't say for sure that I won't be able to record anything until I'm actually at school and I know what's going on and I'm in the routine and everything. Odds are I won't be able to, though. I also will not be able to drag my airbrush around with me, uh, f most likely. So I've decided I wanted to get into figure painting. Last year I showed you some faces I've been painting. I've done nothing else on those. But I have begun to collect some larger figure projects to work on without all my modeling supplies. I got Tamiya's German Machine Gunner, Tamiya's Army Infantryman, and ICM's SWAT Leader. And this 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 selection will probably grow through as the year progresses, but I will in the future, if I post any videos, my goal is to get a decent backlog. So Uploads will probably remain slow, like maybe every other month or something. But the goal is to stack up videos so I can float through every other month for like the next year and a half, maybe. Which really isn't that crazy. It just requires me to get six. If I want to get an entire year and a half out, I just have to finish uh, six models. Sorry, nine models between now and the end of summer. And that could be the entire American Cat series. I want to release those as a weekly event. That's just nine additional models, which is kind of pushing it. But I've already got four. I've already got four out of that nine close to painting. It's what I've showed you in the work in progress, um, minus the tank. So three, the P40 will be a quick build. So I, I think I'll be able to do it. Um, both this year has been fantastic. At the beginning of this year, I had like 200 subscribers. Social Blade, I can't actually look it up right now. Social Blade said I, it would take me two and a half years to hit a thousand. I hit a thousand earlier this year. Big thanks to you guys. I'm closing in on 1100. 
I don't know where the sudden burst of subscribers came from. My FW190 video has been doing particularly well. I think I'm up to like 16,000 views on it with an overwhelmingly uh, positive like to dislike ratio. So I'm, I imagine that's where a lot of the new subscribers are coming from. I don't know how I managed to pull in so many people to that video, but I'm going to try to keep doing that. And uh, the other, the big thing with the subscribers, I can, I fit all the criteria now for advertising. I will not be doing advertising. Um, it makes a pittance for starters, uh, even for big channels, like people, people with hundreds of thousands of sub subscribers don't make enough or barely are barely making money off of ad revenue they have to make all their money off of places like patreon and just looking at other modelers patreons even even the the massive guys like plasmo i don't know how exactly how well he's doing but his his the number of patrons he has compared to his subscriber count is uh not not encouraging especially for someone of considerably lesser skill and pull like myself so I will not have advertisements turned on. I won't turn, get a Patreon or anything. Um, the only thing I might do advertisements on is the American Cats as a series. I probably won't because it just isn't worth it. But uh, no need to go get an ad blocker for for me. Though honestly, you really should. You're in the. It's it's almost 2020. It's time to have an ad blocker, guys. Um, but yeah. So I won't be turning on ads or anything. It's going to stay an uninterrupted build. Any video of mine that does have ads on it, I did not put it there. It's because I use copyrighted music, and they, they, they decided it was worth their time to get that three or four cents. So that's why that happens. Uh, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for making me hit 1,000 this year. That's, I'm going to push for another 1,000 maybe over this coming year. Uh, float through the downtime and I'll see you all see you all at the build video have a good New Year's party or whatever you're doing bye